Hey everybody, uh, Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich here. So we've got to talk about Ian. In between now and Ian this weekend, we are going to have gorgeous weather in the Carolinas, but for parts of Florida, this is going to be a huge flood risk for them. And we'll talk about the flooding rains moving into the Carolinas. Let's look at the storm tonight because one of the things that I'm noticing, the hurricane hunters have been in and out there tonight. Uh, it's dropping pressure like crazy. That means in layman's terms, it's getting stronger. The lower the pressure, the stronger the storm gets. So when we hear terms like bombing out or rapid intensification, that means it's losing pressure rapidly. There's so much air being pulled from the surface of the earth here that it's lowering the thickness of the atmosphere there. So it's getting really, really low pressure. It's like going up in altitude. Um, you know, with your ears popped. So the pressure is dropping like a rock. And what Mother Nature tries to do when there's lower pressure, air tries to flow in there to replace the air uh, that's low pressure. And that creates the wind. But because the thunderstorms are continuing to pull that uh, pressure down, more air is rushing in. So that creates the wind speed. So low pressure, if you ever hear that dropping pressure, really low pressure, bombing out, it's all about a storm getting stronger. And that's what it is. The eye is actually forming south of the southwest of the Isle of Love, which is that island right there, southwest of Cuba. And then there's Cuba, very flat part of Cuba, by the way. Um, so it is likely I'm not going to have a huge impact on its movement as it goes across there. Something else I'm noticing tonight, and this is key for the Carolinas. So for folks in the Carolinas watching this, look at all the rain over Florida already. That's way ahead of the system. There's a stalled front right here. And even though the storm is way down here south of Cuba, would you look at all that moisture way up here? That's what's going to happen in the Carolinas. So as this storms to our south, the moisture is getting squeezed against this cold front. And that is a pretty significant cold front. I'm just going to show you real quickly the atmospheric moisture. I was looking at this earlier. Um, it's bone dry over the Carolinas. Let me pause this and then put a little pause point here. Um, you see all the moisture to the south and you see it kind of getting squeezed against the cold front. There's the cold front. That's that dry air coming down over the southeast. So what's going to happen is as that front meanders back north, it's going to squeeze out moisture all along it. So we'll wait for the 11 o'clock advisory, but this was the 8 p.m. advisory. Winds are 100 miles per hour. Notice the pressure. Um, it is down to 965 millibars. That is way lower than it was earlier. The track is still pretty straightforward um, all the way until about Florida. This is where things get interesting right here. Um, the storm will weaken a little bit before landfall, but please do not take that as less of a storm. Um, the, the hurricane categories are only about wind speeds. It has nothing to do with storm surge, flooding, or, or duration of events. So when you see this thing slow down, what's going to happen is the wind field is going to spread out really wide, and it's going to just sit there and sit there and sit there and push more water up against the coast. And remember, all the rain that's falling tonight ahead of it, well, guess what's happening to all that rain? It's falling over the mainland of the peninsula of Florida. That water's trying to flow back out to the ocean, um, especially on the west side. What's happening? The water is getting pushed in by the wind, and there's nowhere for the water to go, so you end up with a ton of flooding. This is a really bad flood setup for Florida. If you're told to evacuate in Florida, you need to leave. Um, do not play around with this storm. Flooding is our number one killer in these events. It's not wind. You run from the water, you hide from the wind. So if you're supposed to run, evacuate, get the heck out of Dodge, get to higher ground, go inland, even in a higher elevation, um, inland in the middle of the state, even though you're going to see some crazy weather, it's safer than being on the coast where there'll be a storm surge. Then it gets up here in the southeast, and this is where the fun begins for the Carolinas because it's going to meander around. I'm looking at some of the spaghetti plots tonight, and in fact, the consensus plots of a lot of the guidance has it meandering around here for a couple of days, producing really heavy rainfall. So what's steering this thing? You're probably wondering, Brad, what, where the heck is this thing going? Why is it doing these weird things? Well, the first part of this is pretty straightforward. You can see we've got a ridge of high pressure here, ridge of high pressure here. Trough is like a magnet, so this thing wants to get pulled north. Watch what happens. This trough does not pick it up initially. It starts to, and then this trough lifts out, and watch this ridge build back. Watch what happens here. See the ridge kind of start building back to the east, and the ridges connect, and then all of a sudden we get to about Thursday. Look what's happening here. The ridge is now in place. This ridge is in place. There's a little corridor, but it's not strong enough because the, 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 the little trough left. So now it's running into a brick wall. This is like a brick wall that's running into. So it has weak steering currents. It doesn't know what to do. So it sits there, it moves slower, it spreads out. You can see as it's heading into Florida on Friday, here we are all the way into Saturday, and it's still over the Southeast. There's really nowhere 
for it to go. Now this ridge eventually might slowly pick it up, but it's still running into high pressure to the north, which is gonna keep it from really getting out of here in a big hurry. So that's gonna basically keep it from going out. So the setup is pretty straightforward when you start looking at that and the amount of precipitation that this thing is gonna be able to put down. Because when you look at that high pressure to the north of us in the Carolinas, the stalled front, this is the perfect setup to squeeze out a lot of moisture. The good news for us, we don't expect a ton of wind from the actual remnants of, of Ivan. What's gonna happen is the high pressure is a, is a big mountain of air and this is gonna be low pressure. The pressure gradient is gonna produce wind. So you're gonna see wind and rain from this front and from the moisture coming north. I, I was telling someone the other day, Ion is a big, Ion's a big part of this. I'm not going to say it's not, but even if this wasn't here, we would still have a ton of rainfall this weekend. So the rain is coming from other things besides Ian. Ian is just going to add to it and really ramp up the moisture and produce some heavy, heavy rain over a prolonged period of time. So how much are we talking about? Well, let's look at the long range future cache. You can see the system moving north. It gets into Florida, starts squeezing all that moisture out along that frontal boundary. You see it really starting probably late Thursday, but really probably wake up Friday to some rain. It just gets worse as the day goes on. That squeeze play continues Friday, Saturday, Sunday, maybe even into Monday. You know, will it rain every minute of every hour this weekend? Absolutely not, but it'll rain on and off all day, all night. There will be maybe a break here, a little bit of rain there, but it starts really piling up. So by the end of the weekend, you start seeing totals like this starting to pop up. We're talking three to six, maybe even higher maybe seven inches in parts of the mountains and two to four across the Piedmont. Now, what about severe weather risk? Well, one of the benefits of having this set up here, I'm gonna go back to this real quickly, of this cold air being trapped against the mountains, kind of the wedge, there will be no severe weather here. That's too stable. There would be severe weather along this front or anywhere south of it. So if this front should lift north, then the, the risk for, for severe weather would go up. But right now, that risk looks pretty low overall. And the wind speeds, they'll be about 25 to 30 miles per hour. The probability of tropical storm force winds is around 10 to 15%, depending on where you are. But I really think just the winds with the high pressure and the low pressure to the south will cause most of our wind speed. So that's kind of the latest right now. This is going to be a monster in the Southeast Gulf of Mexico. This is the warmest water in the entire Atlantic Ocean that it's moving over. That's basically that loop current. So it's gonna be strong. If you're in Florida, you need to take this seriously. Everybody needs to evacuate. That's in low lying areas, those zones that are gonna flood because this will be some of the biggest storm surge the West Coast of Florida has seen in a long time. Of course, we'll post another update coming up tomorrow morning. We'll have the 11 o'clock advisory. I will post it the second it comes out and I will be doing vlogs probably twice a day throughout the week. If you're in the Carolinas, get ready for a soggy, wet weekend. Not any severe weather, no lightning, not expecting tornadoes right now, but it is gonna be kind of a washout of a weekend.